In this video, we're going to use the data here to calculate cost of goods sold for a manufacturer. So let's take a look at our data. We've got the three types of inventory that manufacturers have right here. We've got raw materials inventory, work in process inventory, and finished goods inventory. And for each one, we have the beginning balance, abbreviated as BB, and the ending balance of the account, abbreviated as EB. Then we also have some information about how much raw materials we purchased during the period, the direct labor costs we incurred, and then manufacturing overhead. So with the data right here, we can go ahead and calculate cost of goods sold. Now, instead of just running right through it, I wanna show you some formulas that might be helpful to you. You might wanna write those down. And then I'm also gonna show you how to calculate direct materials used. And let's start with that. So first of all, to calculate cost of goods sold, we're gonna take the finished goods beginning balance plus cost of goods manufactured and then subtract the finished goods ending balance. Now to do all that we need to know cost of goods manufactured which is the cost of all goods completed during the period. What is that? That's the total manufacturing cost plus the beginning whip and minus the ending whip. Okay what's the total manufacturing cost? Well the direct material used, direct labor and overhead. Now we have two of these three things here, right? So we've got the direct labor is 3,000 and the manufacturing overhead is 1,500. So we're gonna start, we'll say, okay, 3,000 plus 1,500. Those are those two amounts right there. But we need to add the direct materials used. That is not given here. We're gonna have to calculate it. Once we calculate it, we'll have total manufacturing costs, which we can plug in here. And then once we have that, we already have the WIP. We can calculate COG M and then plug in here and we'll get cost of goods sold. That's a lot, but don't worry, you do a few practice problems, you'll be able to do this really well. Okay, so we need our direct material used. And what do we know? We know, so first of all, let's assume any raw materials used are used as direct materials. Okay, we're not gonna worry about indirect materials here. So we start with $50 of raw materials. Okay, so we begin with 50, but then we purchase 2,500. Okay, so we start, so our beginning is 50, but then we add 2,500. But then at the end of the period, we still have 300 left. If there's 300 left, we wanna subtract it because they have clearly not been used. There was 2,550 available at any point during the period, but then we still had 300 left at the end. That means there's 2,250 used in terms of our raw materials, which we're all gonna assume are used as direct materials. So direct materials used is 2,250. Again, you just start with the beginning balance of raw materials, add the purchases, that's the total amount of raw materials available at any point during the period, subtract what's left over, it's still not used at the end of the period, and the amount is what you used. Okay, so we take those, we've got, let's see here, 4,500, 6,750. So 6,750 is our total manufacturing cost, 6750. Now we're gonna plug that in here when we go to calculate cost of goods manufactured. So we're gonna have, so we'll take 6750, okay, that's just from here. And then we're gonna add the beginning work in process, which is 100. And then we're gonna subtract the ending work in process, which is 200. So that's 6650. What is that? That is the cost of goods manufactured. That's our cost of goods manufactured. This is the cost of all goods completed during the period. Why are we, so we're taking all the manufacturing costs that were added. This 100 in beginning work and process uh, inventory, that's cost, manufacturing costs from a prior period. So manufacturing costs from, costs from prior periods plus the manufacturing costs added this period minus stuff that is still in process at the end of the period that's our cost of goods manufactured. If COG, if COG M is the cost of all goods finished during the period, we should take out and not include any stuff still in process at the end of the period because clearly it has not been finished, okay? Now we can calculate, because we, we know our COG M is 6650, we can plug that in here, and we already know finished goods beginning and ending, those are given right here, so now we can calculate cost of goods sold, okay? so. Let's say, so we got finished goods, beginning balance is 400. So 400 plus 66.50, which is the cost of goods manufactured from right here, and then minus 650, minus 650. 
So that gives us $6,400. $6,400. So what is that? That is our cost of goods sold. So this manufacturing company, when they put together their income statement, they're going to have their revenues, then they're going to subtract cost of goods sold to get to gross profit. And this is going to be the number right here, $6,400, that they report for cost of goods sold.